Perfect. Good morning, good day to everybody, whoever's joining us in Australia, Canada, wherever you are. Wherever Welcome. Are. So lucky to have this platform and reach out to so many people. Seriously. Well, I think I, I think we should get started. We've already got a few people who've joined us and um, yes. we're excited to make Pastizio. So everyone, I'd like to introduce to you Maria. Maria is a certified health coach in Canada. She's absolutely amazing and she's a huge advocate for the Mediterranean diet. I really, really admire her. She's changed the way that I start looking at my foods now when I go shopping. Um, <laughs> she brings a lot of awareness to the services that are marketed to us as healthy and unfortunately they're not, are they Maria? No, they're not. The majority of what's being sold in the supermarket is, um, you know, sadly a bad product. Um, so you got to read your labels. And this is what I teach if you follow along. Awareness. It's the way that I go to the shops now. I do spend a little more time in the aisles reading the backs of labels. But now having the knowledge that you've taught me, especially with different types of oils and um, those bad ingredients that can be masked with different names. I mean, yeah. um, it's a difference the way that I do my shopping, that's for sure. Listen, I'm still learning and, uh, you know, I, I've studied this and I'm still learning. There's, it's, it's an ever-changing um, arena and we have to stay abreast uh, to remain healthy. So that's key because we're mommies and at the end of the day, we want to make sure our children are going to have a great shot, you know, at health. So um, really important. And I'm glad I'm in your head when you're shopping, Mary. Yes, you are all the time, all the time. And I feel like texting you sometimes. Is this okay? Is this okay? <laughs> Totally. I mean, look, we're going to have one-offs and we're going to eat a little crap from time to time. But if, you know, the majority of time you're sticking to whole foods, then you're good to go. And that's the key here. Fantastic. And um, I'm going to say that my bechamel, my pastizza is going to be a bit on the naughty side today, but you are going to give us an alternative. Listen, um, you know, it, it's not a naughty is, uh, is okay, like I said, from time to time. Yeah. As long as you're using good flour, Mary, and I'm going to speak to that, as long as the flour you are using, the, the gluten flour you're using is um, not bleached, then it's not really naughty in my book. So um, I'll speak to that. I just went dark all of a sudden. Did you see me? No, uh, you're fine. You're totally oh, wow. Fine. Okay. I, I actually got a blacked out screen and I didn't see you. I hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's go. Tell me what we're doing and how we're starting. I've got my water boiling I've, and I'm about to add my pasta. Now, usually my mom, and I was talking to my friends about this. Um, a lot of us use macar macaronia, so the long tubular pasta. Mm -hmm. My parent, my mom, my yaya, my aunties, they all use penne. And that's what I'm using today. I couldn't find the long macaronia, but I'm okay. going to use that today anyway. So I'm going to put my, um, I've got my water boiling. I'm going to put it in onto the boil and then we can get started on the bechamel. My okay, I, I'll show you what I'm using today. So today I'm going to be using chickpea pasta. Have you ever tried this, Mary? No. I've wow. tried it's pasta. Barilla make a red lentil pasta. I've tried that, but I think they make a chickpea one as well. Chickpea, and this is actually chickpea and red and red lentil. Um, but chickpea is phenomenal, and I highly recommend it. This happens to be my favorite type of pasta. Actually, it has a lot more protein and fiber, so you know it's a little bit more nutrient dense than traditional pasta. But um, this is my uh, pasta choice today. So I got my water boiling too. Um, I'm gonna go for it. Perfect. <laughs> Let's see. Mine is in. Mine takes seven to eight minutes. I don't know about you. Uh, I don't even read the box, to be honest, what it says. 11 minutes, but... 11 minutes. Anyway, okay. <laughs> and, and a trick, and a, just a little tip, if uh, those of you who haven't tried chickpea pasta, it's one of those, like, um, very sticky pasta, so you got to get it out of the water right away. You don't want to overcook it. And I would actually save um, some of the starch water um, that it emits and add it back into maybe the pastizo because colai, it's like really sticky. Right, right, right. So, so you just use a of olive oil as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just a tip there um, for those of you that maybe aren't, um, you know, haven't experienced it yet, but highly recommend it. Fantastic. All right. Well, then should we get started on our bechamel? Sure. Fantastic. Okay. I'm starting off. I've got my butter. Um, I'd say it's about 50 grams here. I don't really measure, but 
recipe I will be sharing, all the measurements will be uh, to the T. So um, it'll be available after the live. But going in with my butter, I'm going to just turn my heat on so we can get that boiling. I'm uh, not sorry, boiling, melting. I'm just going to give my pasta a quick mix so it doesn't stick. Now, does the milk uh, need to be warm, Mary, or? Um, I don't really, I don't really no. um, warm it up, to be honest. I just okay. um, leave it out for 10 minutes or something. Okay. And, um, uh, that's how I add it to my bechamel. Okay, perfect. So I'm using just a whisk. Now, usually I would make my bechamel in a, like a, like a pot like this. But right. This the video and you can't really see it but I will pick up my phone and show you um, I'm using just this sort of dish just so we can kind of see it through the camera okay but yeah I usually just use a, a deep dish when I make um, my bechamel a pot so just move that and the flour I'm using I've got some plain flour or all-purpose flour and a bit of corn flour once again I will share the full um, quantities later. Um, I've eyeballed it today because I'm making quite a large um, tray. So um, I'm just going to have to go off like that. But I will share the proper quantities afterwards. Is your, is your corn flour GMO free, Mary? Yes. Yes, uh, it is. It is. I make sure that I'm very aware now when it comes to anything with corn, especially like corn chips and everything, making sure it's not GMO. Yes. Please, if you're using corn or all-purpose uh, traditional um, flour, like your white or wheat flour, um, you should always look for the, um, what I call unbleached flour, not bleached, okay? It's, you don't wanna have that kind of chemical in, in your food. So um, that's really important. Today, I'm gonna go with a um, gluten-free flour that's again, chickpea and uh, brown rice. Um, and it's, you know, really dense. It's really, you know, it's not, not going to be as airy probably, but it, it, it will yield um, that kind of similar effect that, you know, traditional bechamel, you know, from a visual standpoint. Yeah. Um, but it will be gluten free. We've just got a question. What is GMO, please? Okay. Um, GMO is genetically modified. Um, so that means they've... Um, sprayed it with, um, you know, it's been genetically manipulated and it's been sprayed with glyphosate, which is the number one herbicide that they're treating now all crop, wheat, corn with. And you want to avoid eating that because this is part of our conversation today on, um, you know, uh, the gluten, um, you know, talk is that nowadays gluten is being, you know, um, a, there's a, there's a big issue with our gut health because of things like glyphosate that we're consuming because we are just eating too much gluten nowadays. And it was kind of, um, you know, leading up to, I guess, one of the questions I think that Mary was going to ask, which is what is gluten? And I would leave, you know, I'll go into this whole conversation, but I think my butter may be burning. <laughs> yeah, so my butter is melted too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my flour in there. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in a second. So my flour and my corn flour are going in. Okay. It's really important this step that you cook your flour out because if you just go ahead and add your milk straight away, um, your flour will have a really raw taste in the bechamel and it won't be very pleasant to eat. I've made this mistake a few times in my early days learning to cook and yeah. it's not pleasant at all. So you really got to cook out that, um, uh, that flour. So it will become like a paste at first. I'll just pick up my phone and show everyone. Oops. All right. So I'm just cooking out the flour. Yep, mine looks like that too. Yep, quite pasty, but give it a good few minutes just cooking it through because we just want to eliminate as much as that raw flour taste mm -hmm. as we can. So I've got my kima there and my pasta is cooking away. All right, turn this around again. I might even just hold my phone in front of me. Hello. So someone just writes again, when I don't eat gluten, I feel amazing. Let me explain to you, um, everyone, ah. you know, what gluten is. Uh, gluten is the protein that's found in your grains. 
And these grains that I'm referencing are your wheat, they are your um, uh, barley, they are your rye, it's what's in couscous, it's what's in semolina, it's in what's sourdough. And these, uh, this protein um, is what um, people are having a hard time breaking down in their digestive system. So this is why you can't have the conversation of gluten without talking about your gut. It's really connected. They're like the odd couple. You don't have to be gluten intolerant to have sensitivities to gluten. Yes. Yeah, so there's there's few things that you know um, are going to be signs of whether you have issues with um, gluten and you know if whether or not you're gluten tolerant. Um, one is you're going to either express signs of being bloated all the time after you eat gluten. Um, you know you could have abdominal cramping. You can have issues with your with, believe it or not, you know, I don't want to have the poop talk, but the poop uh, scenario, um, you know, skin issues, um, headaches, it's, it's really associated with a whole battery of, of, of problems. And your gut is going to either be able to process it and break it down correctly or reject it altogether. Um, and so given the way today, great, the grains are not what they were uh, at the time when our gallus were making bread. Um, it's a whole different it's a whole different beast today. It's been manipulated. It's been, um, you know, sprayed, as I said earlier, with, um, you know, herbicides that now it's disrupting our gut health. And you overall, the moment you have gut issues, um, it's really a bad sign for like chronic issues down the road. Um, it, you know, so this is why it's really very important um, to understand and balance how much gluten you're eating, or if you really true have the intolerance, opt for the gluten-free option. There you go. On that note, I got to take my chickpea pasta out. Uh, one second. Oh, so I've just turned my heat down a little bit because I didn't want anything to burn, but we're looking good. Um, now I'm just going to turn it back up again so I can start adding milk. Um, I will, can I do this holding it with two phones? Yeah, I think I can. Let's show you. All right. So this is what my bechamel looks like, everyone. And now I'm just going to slowly start adding milk, probably just a cup at a time, and really work it slowly. All those little clumps that you see will fall apart, and they'll um, uh, come to smooth out and come together into the sauce. You can see that's already starting to thicken so I'm going to go ahead and add more milk. This is like an arm workout Mary. Yes it is but it's so worth it. <laughs> you know my, my oldest son hates bechamel so this is uh, not a dish for him. He doesn't like bechamel. Nope. My goodness. <laughs> and you know and I can't eat pastizio because I'm a vegetarian so then that's right. the other problem that I have is that uh -huh. I don't get to enjoy this dish unless I do it like um you know vegetarian based with like a mushroom type of alternative yes um okay so you're someone just wrote that someone has celiac yeah celiac disease is uh one of the worst that's an autoimmune issue um that's complete rejection of gluten and um, unfortunately, uh, that individual will have to read their labels so um, well because of the fact that gluten is in a lot of hidden places, which is kind of what I exposed earlier this week in my stories, that it's not just the bread you're eating. It's a lot of things. So it's really um, very, very, uh, that's a really harsh uh, that's the worst type of true intolerance. And then you can actually also be allergic to gluten. Um, and then you'll have to avoid that as well. Or you can have sensitivities, which is what I described earlier, having certain symptoms. And the only way to really identify whether or not gluten is the culprit is by clearly um, eliminating it from your diet for some time and then bringing it back in. And then you can see whether or not, you know, you've got, got um, the sensitivity to it. Yes, yes. How's it looking, Maria? It still needs a little bit more to go. So I think I'm going to have to take my pasta out very soon, but the okay. smell is still coming together. I'll give you guys another look. Mary, 
the reason why the reason why it wasn't coming together for me is I had shut the fire off because I was afraid oh. of my butt. My butt yeah, was well, burn. well, you don't want to burn it. So no, no. that was a safe way. So you can see that mine is smooth now. It's, um, it still needs um, a lot more milk because of the large tray that I'm making. But all the clumpiness has gone and disappeared. Yeah. And um, it's smoothed out beautifully. So still needs a bit more milk, but um, it's a labor of love. It is a labor of love. So yeah, so for anyone that um, has sensitivity to gluten, there's a lot of gluten-free flours available nowadays. I mean, well, nowadays, it's always been available. Corn is one, corn is one, but again, you gotta make sure you're buying organic or non-GMO corn. Um, there are oats, which is probably one of my favorites, and from a ratio standpoint to like wheat flour, it's very similar. Um, so it makes for the same amount, like if it's one cup of whole wheat, you can use one cup of oats. It works beautifully. Um, but again, you got to make sure that your oats don't have traces of gluten in it because they're cross contaminated, um, yeah. you know, at the crop level. Um, so you got to look for that seal. And then there's things like buckwheat, which I also love. Um, I mean, there's a whole, there's a whole world to this market right now because um, of this type of gluten insensitivity that a lot of us are experiencing nowadays. So I'm all about balancing it, you know? If you're someone that's eating gluten all day, every day, that's not a good thing either, you know? Um, it's overload on your gut and um, it can throw everything off, um, including the bacteria that's in your gut that's there to help you. It's your little army, I call it, you know? Your immune system lives there. Yes. So, Really important. So I'm still whisking away. Okay. Sweaty, we need to reach that um, much thicker consistency. So each time I add milk, I wait for it to thicken before I add more milk. Okay. And at some point, I'm just going to have to... Um, come on camera, just so I can strain my... Your pasta. Yep. Give me one minute. I'm just going to go off camera so I can see yeah. my pasta. Does anyone who's watching us have any questions on gluten maybe that they want to throw or alternatives or questions in? So I'm using a tray. I've got this shallow, well, kind of deep, but wide tray, yeah. about four inches. I'm just going to throw my pasta in. And I need my olive oil, so I'll quickly grab that. Always going in, just a, just a sprinkle, uh, a drizzle, not much. So my bechamel is pretty much ready, Mary. Oh, lovely. I'm still going. Well, I'm, I'm multitasking. I've got the pasta going. I've got the bechamel. Do you want to share with everyone how you made your kima and what's in it? or? Yes, I will share the full recipe later. I pre-made my kima just so we wouldn't spend a lot of time cooking because it does need a lot of time to simmer yep. and uh, to become really aromatic and flavorful. But I use... Um, I use beef mince and beef mince only, but you can use a combination of, um, a lot of people use pork and beef together, which is really lovely as well. Um, I absolutely love my kima to be full of ar aromats. I love the cinnamon, I love clove, and I love allspice. It really reminds me of my yaya, mm -hmm. and um, my yaya who um, used a lot of spices in her cooking. And um, it's just a really nostalgic flavor, and it just brings yeah. back a lot of childhood memories. And it's not what's so comforting about it as well. Well, I make my kima with like what I call the sniff test because I can't <laughs> taste it. <laughs> so I eyeball everything. And then I make my husband or whoever is around, I'm like, Tisa, does it need salt? Does it need this? You know, because I'm going in blind, but I don't want to, you know, deprive my children of meat based on my, my you know, preference of being vegetarian. Um, so. I cook it at least, you know, which makes me a good mama because there's a lot of people who wouldn't even like bring it in the house. Exactly, exactly. So my bechamel is still going and it still needs a bit more because I've got quite a big tray here. But what I've got here is now to begin the layering process, what just okay. continuing on, 
Um, I've got um, some great, I just freshly graded some Kefalo Gaviera. Okay. I, I like putting it on, a lot of people, what a lot of people do is with their pasta, they add egg white and that just creates like a binder. Um, so Same. later on when, you're, when your pasta still cools, once you cut it, it can be, um, uh, it helps it hold. My yeah. mother never did that when I was young. I never saw her do it. So it's not something that I, I did making pasta, uh, making pasta sauce. So um, I just added a, a generous amount of cheese to the dish. Mm -hmm. And then... Beautiful. Um, now, could I, I, I'm going to use Parmesan, um, but... Perfect. Perfect. Whatever, right? Yes. Whatever you have. Even some pecorino is delicious. Especially in the bechamel. So you put it also, you put the cheese not just on the macaronia, but you also do it in the bechamel when you're doing oh, the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to do it, do it right. We love cheese. <laughs> you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So one thing that people need to just be really careful of, I find, with the gluten-free world is, um, you know... It's become such a trend. It's almost like you, you'll guilt shame someone for ha actually having the gluten. Um, like, what? You eat bread? Like, you know, the in thing is to not do that. And I don't really believe in that. And when I look at sometimes some of the ingredients that they are marketing that are gluten-free, um, it's they're dirtier than the gluten, you know? So I'm like, whoa, you know? So you can't drop your guard. Um, I'm a big proponent of actually just buying the flowers outright, like the buckwheat or the oats, and just kind of doing the stuff in my own kitchen than buying a lot of that processed junk that's out there. Um, unless it's super, super clean, um, you know, I have to really, like, you know, qualify, you know, what's clean, what isn't, and then, you know, say, okay, I, I'll, I'll eat this, you know, bought in a bag versus, like, you know, making it and at home, let's say. When watching, to have that understanding that Maria does, she really goes into depth about it when she visits the supermarkets and really uh, goes into detail about what is in the packets you're buying. So if you don't know what you're meant to be looking for to have a healthier alternative or to avoid certain ingredients that are put into the foods that we think are healthy, definitely follow Maria because she does the most amazing product bashes. I absolutely love them. And... I learned so much from it because we are being um, marketed incorrectly and it's really bad and we really need to be more aware of the things we're buying. So definitely. Right. You're so right. And that's the sad thing. It's all, it all comes down for corporate profits and we are, they're like, you know, they're little guinea pigs, they're puppets consuming this stuff that is actually hurting our system, hurting our gut hurting our health long term because you know it's what you eat in your 20s 30s 40s that's going to impact how your health will be in your 60s and 70s so if you neglect that and think ah oh, yeah i'll stop when i'm 60 yeah by then you're going to be diagnosed with shit so excuse my french but you know it's just not real it's the real world it is it's the reality so um you know again um, you know, gluten nowadays is not what it was and we need to really be careful how we balance it out. And when you go into the supermarket, everything has that word enriched flour or bleached flour. And those are the codes for no, that's the fluffy, super soft, like light as air type of flour. That's how you know that, you know, the, the wheat that's in there is um, the bad wheat that's probably sprayed with the glyphosate that's going to be disruptive to your gut. And when you got that, you know, gut problem going, um, that's, in my opinion, it's all about your gut health. Yeah. And um, research is proving that right now more than ever. So it all stems from there. It's like, they call it almost like your second brain. It's your operating system. And if you don't have it, you know, in check, um, you're in trouble. Yeah. So, word of advice to all of our Australian watchers: if you're at the super, if you're at Coles or Woolies, and you think that loaf of Tip Top or Wonder White is super soft, oh. it doesn't mean it's fresh. No. 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 It does not no. mean it's fresh. No. You need to look for keywords like unbleached flour, or um, you know, uh, I love sourdough, but some sourdough. Is, so, you know, what has sped up the gluten um, is the fact that 
we've expedited modern baking process practices have expedited more exposure to gluten in our food and what i mean by that is you know think about it when you when you make you bake a bread today it takes about like a half hour uh for it to rise because we are adding leavening agents to it um back in the day when yaya used to make bread it would take hours to rise maybe even next day if she would make and the bread was heavy it was dense so the heavier the bread is and if you're using really good flours at home and you're baking at home you'll notice i know when i bake my banana breads and i'm using buckwheat flour that loaf of bread is heavy compared to if i used white flour all purpose white flour so it's really a big difference and um you know it really will impact you know your you know the way everything is operating and the symptoms that we're all feeling you know when you eat pasta and you feel bloated and you feel tired it's connected to the gluten so you got to connect the dots you know and see the big picture yes absolutely so absolutely. my kima really is ready i made it it smells I divine but um, can't taste it. My husband uh, cleared it and said it tastes amazing. I actually put some carotaki in the background and celino and celery. Um, Beautiful. I usually I put this cut layer in too. I just turned off my bechamel. I'm just I've turned it off. It's still hot. I'm, I'll get back to it. I'll add a whole lot of cheese to it and I'll check the seasoning as well. But I'm just going to put my kima into the uh, pasta. Mm -hmm. I might show you guys as well. Yeah. Cool. So you're not just looking at me. Let's look at the food as well. All right. Mary, your, your pastizio is like a sexy pastizio. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think all pastizio, pastizio is uh, that's pretty sexy, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say, when I, when I shot your, uh, you shot your reel and you uploaded it, I saw your pastizio oh, yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> I said, it. I, <laughs> As a vegetarian, I wanted a comati. I was like, come on, can you send me one? <laughs> it's, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh, it's just one of those sexy foods, isn't it? It is. It is. You know, um, I will say, though, I've done a, um, you know, mushroom walnut bolognese version, yeah. but I didn't do it with uh, pastizzo uh, style. I did it moussaka style, and it was like, off the chain delicious. I've made a few, um, especially during Lent, I've made a few vegan uh, bolognese's, and I have to say they are absolutely delicious. With full of lentils, mushroom particularly, yeah. as the meat substitute, it is really, really tasty. You just use Best. the same All you do is just um, use um, mushroom instead of meat and just um, uh, lentils if you like, and it, yeah. is, it is really, really beautiful. Great. It's like plant-based protein delicious you know yeah. i'm a big fan of the plant-based diet My husband and i we do eat a lot of plant-based during the week yeah that's a uh, good diet to be on as well i agree more, more plants in your diet so all of my kima is now in with that side and i'm just going to come back to my bechamel so now, Mary, are we adding an egg to the bechamel, or did you add it already? And I missed that. No, that's the very last thing I do. So now I'm just oh. going to add my cheese. Okay. Now I'm going to add my very generous amount of capello gabbiera that I've uh, grated just beforehand. And you can add nutmeg to your bechamel as well. Yeah. Nutmeg is really beautiful. Um, my mother never did. And and because I've got cinnamon and um, clove and allspice in my kima, um, I really just like the bechamel to be quite um, simple. Simple, yeah, cheesy, just cheesy. So now that I've added the cheese, a lot of it, my um, bechamel has really thickened up beautifully. So, so there's no more clumps like there were earlier. Okay. So yours looks a little more loose than mine. Mine looks thi um, thicker. It could be the... Um... Could be the flour. Yeah. Should I add, maybe I'll add a little more milk. Yeah, when in doubt, if you think it's a bit too thick, just add a bit more milk. Okay, okay. Now, 
because I added a whole lot of cheese, I do want to make sure the seasoning is okay. So I'm just going to give it a quick taste. Good? Yeah. It's good, but it needs a bit of salt. Oh, wait, did not add salt. Just a bit of salt while tasting it. I also add cracked pepper as well. That's optional, but my husband loves his pepper. Lots of pepper in your bechamel. Hey, yeah. I always have pepper in my bechamel. It works. Pepper and cheese work so beautifully together. Yeah. Well, anything with cheese, Mary, anything. Oh, that's true. Mm, so good. I can just, I can just eat that all day with the cabbage, and I'm happy. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Not the best for anyone's diet, but it's definitely. It's all right. Who's watching? Nobody's watching, Mary. Oh no, no one, no one, no one. I'll just um, enjoy myself here. <laughs> okay, that's looking good. I'll show you once again what it's looking like. Yeah. Uh, where's the thing? There you go. All right. So that's what it's looking like. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very, try and be brave and do it with one hand, but I'm just quickly, oh, we lost it. Oh. That's okay. I can get it out. So if that does ever happen, I need to be quick, but if that does ever happen, shell gets shell out. So that's if right. you, if you do lose some shell, just use the shell and it, and it almost works like a magnet. And now just quickly stirring that through. So just because I wanted to watch you do it, I will do it. Uh, but I'm going to crack mine in a little bowl, Mary. Yes, that's the, pro the proper way to do it. I just thought, oh, I'm holding my phone. I might as well see if I can do it with one hand. All right, that looks good. Ah, uh, yes. So someone has said, Ria has said that nutritional yeast is a great alternative to cheese. That's yes, that is true. It's fantastic. I love it as well. That is true. If you're, um, let's say you're dairy intolerant, um, at, you know, or you've got cholesterol issues and you want to minimize cheese, you could definitely use nutritional cheese, uh, nutritional yeast, um, you know, in lieu of the shredded um, gefalotidi or whatever it is that you're using. Yes. I'm going to try it one more time just because I love it so much, but just want to make sure as well. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> so yours is ready. Yep, yeah, mine's ready. I'm just quickly going to take it off my plate because the plate's still hot. Okay, that's ready to pour in there. So I might just tilt my camera down real quick, just so we can see the satisfaction of the pool. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going in, Maria. Okay, I will do the same. I'll grab my gloves. Where are they? They're over here. It's crazy how you guys are winter there and I'm summer here. Oh, uh, we just started winter already. I'm counting down to summer. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. We not cope well in, in winter. Even though our winter is considered manageable for most countries around the world. It ain't my winter, Mary. I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I shouldn't be complaining, right? And I'm not even Canadian. I got stuck here, you know? I married a Canadian. <laughs> So my, my bechamel is in, now I'm just going to give it another sprinkle of cheese. Oh, you really are going at it, huh? Like I said, if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> Why not? Nice. And pastizzo is one of those dishes that we don't really eat a lot. Um, it's, it's one of those, I guess, like treats. I'd say like once every four months sometimes, which... <laughs> A bit sad, but um, yeah, it's not a fan favorite in my house either. Uh, uh, well, I have my oldest who doesn't eat the bechamel, 
And then I don't eat it because I'm a vegetarian. So then that leaves the three of them and my little guy and my daughter love it. So, you know, I don't make it that often because my, my petera, my mother-in-law is always, always volunteering herself to make pastizio. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, moussaka is a bit of a much healthier alternative. It is. I just find moussaka takes even more work because you have to chop the vegetables and grill them in advance or roast them, however you do it, you know. Um, it just, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, and again, I have no uh, qualms about working in the kitchen. I'm all about home cooking. Um, we need to go back to that more. And this is why I follow people like you and other cooks out there to get inspired and motivated because I like changing things up. Um, I'm not someone that wants to eat the same thing all the time. I get bored easily and I just like people's versions of certain things, you know, and I'm like, you know, um, but we need to cook more. This is how we're going to become healthier by cooking more, but we also know how, but it also stems from knowing what ingredients to purchase because that's the other thing. You can bring home all the bad oils and the flours and you may be cooking at home, but you know, not well. That's why we need to watch how we're marketed and understand how they're marketing things to us. Like I said, it's marketed to us like we think it's healthy, but it's really not. And that's why you bring such amazing awareness to that. And I love what you do. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's all about that, Mary, um, because they get us on the first, they get us on, let's say, the, the, the front of the, of the product. And then no one looks to read the fine print of really what's in it, or even if they are reading it, they may not really understand everything. Um, they just, there's so much hidden stuff. And I mean, again, I'm always still learning and it blows my mind. Sometimes I wish I didn't even learn this and I'm like, oh my God, it's yeah. really, um, it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but if we stay on top of it, um, and I believe if we don't purchase these products, uh, that's, that's room for change, you know, because then they realize, well, it's not selling. But if you're yeah. constantly buying it, uh, then, you know, hey, they're going to run with it, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, so well, we're, how long to bake so we know, or you could... Uh, I'm going to put mine into the oven at 180 degrees okay. Celsius. Um, now, some things can happen in the oven at this stage. Because we've got the cheese sitting on top, that melts very quickly. Okay. So what I do is I always put my pastizio right at the bottom of my oven. So heat rise, you know, that's going to be the hottest part of your oven and that's going to brown much quicker. So you want it to be quite a slow process for the browning to happen, to, for it to create that crust and that's why I put it at the bottom of my oven. Okay. It might take half an hour and once it's ready, just let it sit for 20 minutes so you can see that real nice, uh, you know, uh, layering of um, different ingredients. But um, what's interesting is my friends and I were all talking about bastizzo the other day and we were saying that our parents never made bastizzo to be to have the layers so um pronounced um my mum she always mixes the pasta together and mm -hmm. it's you can't really see the layers and um it's just interesting how everyone does it in the way we like we we make it so differently different styles different times <laughs> different ingredients um and this is you know why you do what you do to share your style. And, you know, I'm learning. I learned my, my uh, pastizio isn't as pretty as yours, but I'm sure it tastes good. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to taste good. I'll, I'll send you a final photo of it much later. Yes, yes. Well, the full, I will be sharing the full recipe um, just, uh, just shortly after um, we, we get off today. Mm -hmm. So... I'm looking forward to lunch. I've got some family coming over, so we're gonna enjoy this for lunch today. That's I'll pop up a nice, beautiful, fresh Greek salad. And that's, the only thing that's missing is the location, which would preferably be in Greece, but we have to do with what we've got. <laughs> well, um, when I, you know, I, I, I shared with you that I'll be going this summer, so. Um, I'm very jealous. I'll have to FaceTime you when I'm there and show you my, what I'm looking at, whatever I'll be looking at or yeah. I'll be in front of the heater with my aroba on and slippers, so. <laughs> it's calling my name. I got to go. And I cannot wait to, you know, bask in that sun, that Mediterranean sun, those beaches, and that food. So 
um, you know, we're looking forward to that as a family vacation and, and to go back to New York. I haven't been home in quite some time since COVID started. And um, I got to go see my siblings and, you know, the rest of the gang that's there. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it, Mary. Thank but we'll do much. this again. As always, we're going to always be together in the kitchen at some point. <laughs> so um, thank well, you. Well, it's been wonderful, Maria. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as and always. For host my first live here on Mary's Cuisina. She and did amazing, she right guys? Show me the hearts. Come on everybody, pump your hearts on the side. She did great. A more occasional thing. Look at the hearts. Look. <laughs> you did awesome, Mary. You, you did great. Thank, thank you. Times for presenting this for us. That's well. right. They will be streaming it on their socials as well later. So if you didn't catch up on everything, um, you can rewatch it later. And of course, Marie and I will be posting it on socials as well. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Bye, happy more. Take care, okay? Oh, Good luck. Thank you. Bye, Bye honey. Bye. Everyone. Bye.